Let's talk about metformin. Some take it for diabetes and polycystic ovary syndrome, and some even use it for weight loss and longevity or anti-aging. And even though metformin is one of the safer diabetes medications out there, it still poses real risks and real side effects that you need to be aware of. And metformin can also lead to important vitamin deficiencies that most people don't know. So in this video, I'll go over who should, and more importantly, who should not take this medication. And I'll also go over the best way to take metformin to avoid the side effects or to avoid vitamin deficiencies. And at the end of the video, I'll discuss the best alternatives to metformin if it turns out that metformin is not right for you. As always, this video is educational only, so please talk to your doctor before making any changes to your health regimen. I'm Dr. Leonid Kim. I'm board certified in obesity and internal medicine. And on this channel, I discuss the most up-to-date and evidence-based information on topics of weight loss, metabolic health, and longevity. Let's get into it. So what's so special about metformin? Well, metformin, or it's also known as glucophage, it traces the roots to a plant that was first used in medieval Europe. And it was used to treat symptoms that we now associate with diabetes, which include frequent urination and thirst. And metformin acts primarily on the liver where it blocks gluconeogenesis, or a process by which our livers make glucose from fats and protein. And more specifically, it disrupts the mitochondria in our liver cells and disrupts the energy process that leads to the production of natural sugars in our bodies. Okay, so when it comes to the side effects, the most common side effect is diarrhea, which probably affects up to a third of the people that take this medication. And some people may also get nausea or vomiting and you may get indigestion and bad gas. The good news about these GI side effects is they typically subside on their own eventually. But one thing you can do is to make sure your doctor prescribe you the extended release formulation of metformin as the extended release form is 50% less likely to give you side effects than the immediate release form. Also, it helps to stay on the lower dose longer as these GI side effects are dose dependent. So the higher the dose, the more intense are the side effects. And it's it's okay to stay on the lower dose for months to let your body get used to it. And another thing that will help is to take metformin with food. And if you're taking the extended release form, the best time to take that is right after your dinner. Now, one of the most important things to know about metformin is it can lead to malabsorption or reduced absorption of important vitamins like vitamin B12 and folate. In fact, just four months of being on metformin can put you at risk for a vitamin B12 deficiency. And we have meta-analyses like this one that showed that vitamin B12 levels were reduced by metformin in a dose-dependent manner. So if you've been taking metformin and you experience things like fatigue or neuropathy or trouble concentrating or anemia, then you definitely need to have your vitamin B12 levels checked out. By the way, I made a whole separate video on the warning signs of B12 deficiency that you cannot afford to miss. And I'll post a link to the video in the description below. But if you start a metformin and plan on continuing it for more than four months, I would definitely recommend checking your B12 levels regularly. And for some folks who are at higher risk for developing B12 deficiency, I would actually recommend supplementing with B12 for as long as you take metformin. But once again, discuss this with your doctor as this video is educational only and everyone's situation is different. And when it comes to folate, the data is not as clear as it is with vitamin B12, but we do have some studies like this one that shows that adding both B12 and folate to metformin was associated with a beneficial effect on HDL cholesterol and renal function in patients with diabetes. Now, when it comes to more serious side effects or precautions, the most life-threatening safety concern is lactic acidosis, which is a condition where you get a buildup or you get too much lactic acid in your body. Now, this lactic acidosis is extremely rare, but it is a black box warning by the FDA. Now, the way metformin works is it actually causes a subclinical or barely observable lactic acidosis, which in of itself doesn't pose any problems. And in fact, our body can naturally build up small levels of lactic acid just by strenuous exercise. But it will become dangerous in extreme overdoses, or it can be dangerous if you have any conditions that can slow down the clearance or slow down of the removal of the lactic acid. Which brings me to important precautions when it comes to who should and who should not be on metformin. First, you should not take metformin if you have advanced kidney disease. And if you do have chronic kidney disease, then your kidney function needs to be closely monitored while you're on metformin. Next, you have to stop taking metformin if you experience suddenly worsening or deteriorating heart failure. Now, just like with your kidneys, it's not the chronic heart failure that we usually worry about, 
but it's the acute or sudden worsening of a heart failure that usually comes with leg swelling and shortness of breath. And we should also stop metformin if you suffer from advanced or worsening liver disease, since it's our liver that is responsible for clearing excess lactate that leads to lactic acidosis. So we don't want metformin on board if your liver is not doing well. Now, once again, I want to emphasize we are not worried about metformin in folks with chronic liver disease or chronic kidney or stable heart disease. And in fact, we have recent systematic reviews that look at data from 1990s and all the way to 2016 and found that metformin use in patients with moderate chronic kidney disease and chronic heart failure or chronic liver disease was safe and it actually improved clinical outcomes. It's the acute worsening of this condition is when we need to stop taking metformin. And another important precaution, metformin should not be taken by people who are heavy drinkers or suffer from alcoholism. And something else you need to watch out for is if you ever need to get a CT scan that requires iodine-based contrast, which is a chemical that is injected into your veins to help visualize things on the scan, then you may need to temporarily stop metformin before the CT. The big concern there is historically there was worry that some people may experience kidney damage from the contrast medium. So that's why we used to have blanket recommendations to stop metformin before getting iodine-based contrast in case the kidney function was affected and the kidneys were not able to flush out the metformin metabolites or flush out the buildup of lactic acid. But we now have more and more evidence that with the improved techniques and the contrast that we use today, the risk of worsening kidney function is extremely low. So the recent guidelines only recommend stopping metformin if you have kidney disease or liver disease or heart failure or if there's history of alcoholism. But every clinic and every imaging center may have their own guidelines. So double check with your healthcare professional and let them know you're on metformin before getting a CT scan with contrast. Now let's say you're prescribed metformin, but you couldn't tolerate the side effects or you just wanna try something else. Well, in that case, the alternative I would recommend discussing with your doctor is a supplement called berberine. Now berberine works similarly to metformin and just like metformin, it also acts on the AMPK pathway in the mitochondria. The data on berberine is not as robust as what we have with metformin, but it's still very impressive. So we have a meta-analysis of 27 randomized controlled clinical trials that included over 2,500 patients that show that berberine's effect on type 2 diabetes is comparable to other oral therapeutic regimens and that there was no statistical significance between berberine and oral hypoglycemics. And more specifically, we have a small study that showed that over a three-month period, the glucose lowering effects of berberine was similar to that of metformin. In addition to helping with diabetes and insulin resistance, berberine also has therapeutic effects on cholesterol with limited but very promising data. If you'd like to learn more about berberine, I made a separate video on that over here. I hope this review is helpful and I'll see you in the next one.